let me say good morning. Let me say great morning. Today, a special, an extravaganza, a first. We're bringing back our two-part interview with Mitchell Parrish, the man who wrote Stardust, one of the most beloved and gifted lyricists in all of music. And uh, we've rarely gotten as many requests as recently to bring back those two segments, and we're going to do it as one. And to set the scene, a little bit of what we call memory lane, uh, we've been showing uh, supplement uh, pieces from old Sunday newspapers, and we've tried to choose a few of the pieces uh, of entertainers who might have sung, who definitely did sing Mitchell Parrish lyrics through the years. Kind of uh, good, appropriate tie-in. Kate Smith was radio's first lady. Kate Smith sang Stardust on the radio as far back as 1931. Lyrics by Mitchell Parrish. Music, of course, by Hoagie Carmichael. Lanny Russ, radio's beloved crooner of yesteryear. Lanny Russ. Back in the days when people would name their babies after Lanny. That's how popular this man was. Vivian Blaine sang many Mitchell Parrish lyrics, including Sophisticated Lady. Dick Hames, big record of stars fell on Alabama. Dorothy L'Amour made record albums featuring many Mitchell Parrish songs. Betty Grable sang them in the movies. The very able Miss Grable. Jeanette McDonald, golden voice of the screen. Alice Faye sang so many songs written by Mitchell Parrish. And so it goes, everybody you could think about. Not only the ones to be found in the Sunday supplements sang Mitchell Parrish songs. Following these words, my friends, part one and part two. Then after the show, a little bit of a trivia game with you and me and Richie Ornstein. Right now, though, we lean back and get ready to go back for both parts of an exclusive, rare, recent chat with the brilliant Mr. Mitchell Parrish. Stay here. Watch. Enjoy. A good friend of mine is recuperating from a little bit of back surgery. He's soon going to be running around Central Park Reservoir again. And he is one of the greatest lyricists in the whole history of songwriting or Tin Pan Alley. Makes no rounds, travels no circuits. But we're old pals. I mean, young pals. And he said he would drop down here and chat with me. Part one now and part two in about uh, 47 hours from now. Night after tomorrow night. His name is Mitchell Parrish. Can I shake that hand and say... You look great. Enchante. Any problem driving out to Secaucus, like getting well, lost? Uh, no problem. <laughs> Just uh, uh, we, we wound up in Trenton. <laughs> or, I don't know, somewhere in I Idaho. This man's way with words. I mean, uh, Eddie, you know, we, we had all kind of people want to come down here and sing your songs. Let, let me show the book. The book is called Start. I got to ask right off the bat, does it, does it ever annoy you, does it bother you when, when people say on the radio, Hoagie Carmichael's Stardust, when, when without, <laughs> without your words, there'd be no Stardust? I, well, that happens a lot of times. They'd say uh, Jerome Kern's uh, Old Man River. Right. They wouldn't mention Hammerstein. <laughs> right. But it is not the... Uh, the composer who's responsible for that. Hoagie Carmichael would always give credit to his lyricists. Always. But the, the announcers, they want a shortcut, as they say. Jerome yeah. Kearns. Yeah. Instead of saying Hammerstein, Hammerstein and Kearns, Old Man River. Jerome Kearns, see, it's a shortcut. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to tell you, I don't know, I, I, you know, when I gush, it's obvious. I gush in front of this man. There's no more Irving Berlin, there's no more Cole Porter. There's no more Hoagie Carmichael, but there's Mitchell Oh, yeah, there is Irving Berlin. You hear his songs all the time. True. I, you're, you're right, you're right, you're right. How you don't I, mind if I correct you. What do you mean? How can I argue with, with, with this man's gift for words? Can I tell you one of my favorite... I have a way with words, right? Can I tell you one of my favorite Mitchell Parrish lyrics? Alabama and glamour. You had to bring that up. <laughs> tell me about that, please. Well, Stop. of course, it's not a perfect rhyme. Uh, <laughs> it, it should be Alabama right. and glamour, or glamour. Right. But it, it serves the purpose, and it, I don't think people are that critical where they actually analyze the rhyme. Stars fell on Alabama. I love that. Now, now Stardust, Mitch. First of all, how do you feel? That's number one. More, more than I feel song. lousy. Lousy, right. No, uh, this ride nearly knocked I don't, uh, you know, I usually look very glamorous, but this, this trip really knocked me out. Did you get any ideas for any songs on the way? No. No, I, I don't keep uh, thinking of songs all the time. No more. I keep thinking of uh, 
mundane things. Like residual checks? No. Let's not bring up uh, mundane things like money on no. the ship. No. Because, you know, I write because I'm inspired. Right. And uh, the monetary aspects uh, are just uh, secondary. Right. Most writers are that way. They write because they enjoy, they love to write. How many people, or, or do you feel that many people, Mitchell, fell in love because of your songs? Many, many. In fact, uh, oh, numerous ones. In fact, uh, when I do a performance sometimes in 90 Seconds Read Why, a lyrics and lyrics series, right. series, people come over to me and say, you know, I got married because of your songs. Right. Stardust, the deep up, whatever that happens to be. And sometimes I detect, detect a note of hostility. Right. You know? You, they were better off if they didn't hear that song, right? They would be better off not hearing your if, music. If you have to explain a joke, you should, <laughs> it's, it's just too bad. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to get a, a, a laugh from no, no, the we, audience. No, we don't I, have... I didn't even hear a snicker. No, no, yeah? Mitchell, we don't have any studio audience. We just play for the people at home. I tried a studio audience. I didn't enjoy it. I just no? play for the, for the two or three camera people and for the audience at home. Well, we're not on now, are we? Yeah, we're on. We're talking now to about four million people. Yeah, I thought this is on tape. We get pretty... No, we're on live. We're on live? Yeah. Whatever you say goes out to a lot of homes, a lot uh, of saloons. This is, this is going to uh, ramp my style. <laughs> Mitchell, may I ask you one question? Ask me a lot of questions. This would make me the happiest man in the world. Young man, if you would give me one time your words for Stardust. I, I got more that I want to say, but, but if you would... Because Stardust, I want you guys to know, it was first an instrumental. Stardust, when it was written, was not a hit. It was just... A, 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 right, tell, you tell him. It was just on... Uh, on manuscript paper, and, and uh, it was played by little combinations, just if, I don't remember the names. Small groups. Small groups, and it wasn't really, it didn't become uh, what, it actually, what it eventually became. And then Mitchell Parrish wrote the lyrics. I remember I read, was reading an old columns where, where Walter Winchell... He was very, he was very, uh, excuse me, pun, instrumental in <laughs> making the song... Uh, uh, what it became. Weren't you the, the, the poet laureate of Walter Winchell's column? I, I would always see your poetry in the... Yeah, I used to write the uh, sonnets at the top of his column. Uh, there was another guy who, uh, who used to write... Uh, remember Nick Kenny? I knew Nick. Yeah, and uh, he was with the Mirror. Right. You know? He was with the Mirror, and he wrote those little patty poems. Right. And... Uh, he was known as the Noel Coward of the slums. Right. He would put my name in his birthday box four times a year. He, he had people in the birthday box who were dead for 20 That's years. That's right. He <laughs> was great. Mitchell, yeah. if you would do me that one favor, I know a lot of people are going to want to record this and save it. This is, if you would give us your words, the words you wrote for Hoagie Carmichael's music. This has to be the most recorded song in the whole history of the world. Do you have one favorite recording of Stardust? Well, there are a few. Uh, you know, it's like a mother with her children, you know. Right. Uh, there are a few recordings, uh, two of my favorites. Uh, I think they run neck and neck. It's Nat King Cole right. and Frank Sinatra. Didn't Frank make a record of only the verse? That's right. He recorded it fully, the full song. And uh, at another time, he recorded just the verse. And the record was known as the verse of Stardust. That was the name of the record. Right. No chorus. No chorus. I don't know of any other uh, case where this was done. Do you? Mm, not really. There was once an album called Verses Only. There was? By a lady singer years really? ago. Really? Yeah, but... but uh, I never knew that. But never by Sinatra of any other song with only the verse. Yeah, but I, I, that's a very interesting record. I'd I, like I'll, to know about it. I'll I'd find like you the copy. I'm sure Stardust is in that album. Oh, yes. But uh, it, it's a very interesting record. Yeah. Uh, uh, idea. That concept, yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Americana. This is a thrill of thrills for me. As I started to say, we could, many people wanted to come here and sing today. I said, no, I got the man here who wrote the words. If he would just recite the words, you know, we told Madonna. Well, I sing it too, you know. I've been performing. Either way. You either know way. you're talking to a star. I know that. Either way. Let me have a little bit of Mitchell Parrish. Do you want me to tell you how it happened? Yeah, please. How became please, a star? Please, how you became a star. Yeah. I was uh, not thinking of, well, writers, you know, they sing to sell the song to the publisher. They have to demonstrate it. So they, they sing a little bit in the publisher's office. Right. But one day I received a call from Maurice Levine. Right, I know he's a good man. The, uh, the artistic director good of the, 90 the Lyrics and Lyricists series. Right. And he said, I'd like you to do one of our shows. I said, I never sang before. He said, this is over the phone. Let me hear you sing uh, Stars from Alabama. 
So over the phone, I said, we lived our little drama. We kissed in a field of white. He said, you're in. So I became a star after that. Got the job. I got the job. And I've been performing ever since. Give me the opening line of Sophisticated Lady. I, I could do one year of the songs this man wrote. Give me a little bit of Sophisticated Lady, please. They say, into your early life, romance came. And in this heart of yours burned a flame, a flame that flickered one day and died away. I want the audience to know one thing about this man, and I love him, we know each other a long time. He is normally very cantankerous and facetious and sarcastic and biting. To get him in a nice, mellow mood like this, not yelling at anybody, it's, <laughs> it's nice. I'm, I'm very touched. I'm seething inwardly. I know, I know that feeling. I know that. How about one more, one more Duke Ellington uh, collaboration? One more memory of any more? Uh, well, I did a thing uh, where my name is, and it, it's an old story, Mood Indigo. Right, right. You know about that. Many times when names were omitted for uh, yeah. political reasons. Yeah, right. I did that. I did a few with Duke Ellington. I did one called I'm Satisfied. <clears throat> and uh, How about Glenn Miller? Well, Glenn Miller, that's the only thing I did with him, and it happened this way. Uh, he, he had this tune, you know, that eventually became Moonlight Serenade. A couple of jiggers of Moonlight? Is that the one? What? The Moonlight Serenade. No, not uh, Moonlight Madonna. Uh, there's another one. Moonlight Cocktail. Oh, Moonlight something? Cocktail. I'm no. mixed up. I apologize. No. Right. I, I accept it. No. Take it out of my salary. Right. right. Um, uh, he wanted... That was his theme, tune. Right, you know? I know. So he wanted the lyric, lyric writer who had written the lyrics for Stardust to write the lyrics from... And, and eventually it became Moonlight Serenade. Right. Which is his biggest Stardust today. We're going to do that on part two. I'm chatting here with Mitchell Parrish. We are launching a fantastic... There was also a Broadway show that ran alongside. Oh, yes. Who's the it, publisher? It, the publisher is... Uh, uh, Harry N. Abrams. Oh, he they, publishes these art books. They do great books. Beautiful, beautiful uh, work he puts This he, is the beginning of the beginning of a salute to Mitchell Parrish. We're going to be winding up now and doing part two with a whole bunch of people who want to chat with you following these words, my friends. We shall return with the one and the only and the great Mr. Parrish. Last time I saw Parrish. Be right back. Stay here. <laughs> okay, the other night we launched this book officially. We might mention that Stardust is back uh, on the stage in San Francisco right now. And we spoke with Mitchell Parrish about... Uh, a million of his songs, Sophisticated Lady, Sweet Lorraine, and uh, so many more. But I was wondering, I, I play a Benny Goodman record on the radio called Don't Be That Way. Didn't I see your name? Didn't you write Don't yes, Be That Way? Yes, I wrote with Benny Goodman and Edgar Sampson. How did that go? Oh, honey, please don't cry. How did don't that cry. Oh, honey, please don't be that way. It's not an easy, it's pretty rangy, but I, I sing it. Mm-hmm. What about uh, the first Mitchell Parrish hit? What's, uh, let's, or the first gigantic Mitchell Parrish hit? Well, I had a hit when I was about 18 years old called Carolina Rolling Stone. It was published by Joe Morris. I have that old record, by I think, yeah. by Van and Skank. Van and Skank. Give me that. Uh, poor little me. Poor little me. Right. I'm just a Carolina Rolling Stone. I want to be with the folks I call my own, and so on. Oh, Van and Skank, they were terrific. Was there, was there an act in vaudeville called the Singing Songwriters where they'd come out on the stage? And... Trip to Hitland. Trip to Hitland. A I trip like... to Hitland and had ten songwriters. Well, I you're... was too young to join it. You were a baby. But the, who, who, yeah. who, who, who was there? Well, Benny, had Benny Davis? Uh, Charlie Tobias. Irving Caesar? Irving Caesar. Right. Uh, Gene Schwartz. Right. You right. remember Gene Schwartz? He was married to one of the Dolly sisters. Right. He wrote Chinatown. You know, Chinatown, my Chinatown. Didn't you begin, Mitchell, by plugging uh, other people's songs? That's right. I was a song plugger. I started when I was around 18, 17 years old. I was getting $12 a week. Jack Mills, he just started in business himself. I mean, he was a professional manager, a song plugger. Now they call them professional managers. Right. Know? They gentrify it. Right. And uh, I, uh, he hired me for $12 a week to write special material, not songs. Right. And I was writing special material for other writers' songs. Yes. That's how most lyric writers started. 
writing special material. The last time I saw Parrish, ladies and gentlemen, Mitchell Parrish. I'll overlook that. <laughs> he promised us that... No, I'm going to remember that. Uh, take it out of my salary, right? Uh. He promised us that maybe, and this man makes no rounds, travels no circuits, you don't see him on anywhere. Uh, he's uh, celebrating with us his 91st birthday. He's recuperating from some back surgery, but he'll soon be running around the park again. I'm the, sure. the reservoir. The yeah. reservoir, right? But, 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 Mitchell, if you would give us the words. I, I mentioned the other day that Madonna, they all want to, everyone wanted to come down here today and sing Stardust, but I said I, I'd rather have you either sing it or recite it, because the man who wrote those words, I think, is Mr. Americana, Mr. Music, and if you would do it, it would be beyond uh, thrilling for Well, you. I usually get paid for this, but... Uh, get paid in, in, in a hearty handshake. But being that you're a dear friend of mine... Right, right, right. <clears throat> is this the most recorded song of all time? Yes, they say. How many, in the thousands? Yeah, I'd say. Okay. I, 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 am, I, don't, I don't keep track of it. No. But you get the royalty checks. You know, I told you before, not to <laughs> introduce monetary matters no. because I'm an artist. Right, and money isn't everything. No, it's most, uh, no. it's just the secondary health, consideration. Health and happiness are 1%. I'd right. say 99%. <laughs> right, I'm only kidding. I know you are. Mitchell, please. The, the, this man wrote these words to an unknown instrumental about 1931 29. 29 yeah. and, and it became the most popular lyric in the history of lyrics, if you're in the movie. Well, when we wrote it, you know, um, we didn't know what it was going to become. I know. See, when I, you don't write a standard. You don't sit down and no. say, I'm going to write a standard. Just now. another song. A good song. Right. You, it, when you write a good song, but then it's up to many factors after that. And very few attain standard uh, status. The song that millions of people fell in love to, got married to, had babies to, and Mr. Parrish wrote and these words. And some show hostility. Some show hostility, people. right. Mr. Parrish I get that in. wrote these words. Non-hostile, non-cantankerous non today. Uh, what is it you would like me to do? Stardust. Uh, <clears throat> and now the purple dusk of twilight time steals across the meadows of my heart. High up in the sky the little stars climb, always reminding me that we're apart. You wander down the lane and far away, leaving me a song that will not die. Love is now the stardust of yesterday, the music of the years gone by. Sometimes I wonder why I spend the lonely night dreaming of a song. The melody haunts my reverie and I am once again with you when our love was new and each kiss an inspiration. Ah, but that was long ago. Now my consolation is in the stardust of a song beside a garden wall. When stars are bright, you are in my arms. The nightingale tells his fairy tale of paradise where roses grew. Though I dream in vain in my heart, it will remain my stardust melody, the memory of love's refrain. I am reminiscing here, part one, with the very poetic Mitchell Parrish. Happy birthday today. Thank you. Happy Stardust. I know a lady whose name is Lorraine, and she yeah. says to me she loves you because you wrote a song. G give me a little bit of that, just the opening. Well, I'll tell you a story <laughs> about Lorraine. I, I did a show. Oh, oh I, I was talking to the Times, the uh, New York Times. He did a, an article on me at, uh, a few uh, a couple of months ago. His right. name is uh, Craig... Uh, you know, you know the one. Whatever he is, I'm, I'm, I, yeah. I've seen his byline, right? Well, somebody came over to me once and said, were you inspired by some girl by the name of Lorraine? Right. Sweet Lorraine. 
You know, they, if you write a song with a name of a girl, immediately they think some, you knew some girl who inspired They you. think it's personal. Yes. So just, you know, because as you said, I'm a little bit uh, contra ornery. Yeah. So this sweet uh, lady comes over to me and says, were you inspired by, who inspired you to write Sweet Lorraine? Was it some girl? I said, yes. Yeah. I said, when I lived on the Lower East Side, there was a girl by the name of Sadie Moskowitz. That's Lorraine, right. And, and, then wrote, and, I, and that inspired me to write Sweet Lorraine. Every honeybee and we fills say with yeah, so more happy birthdays one. to a marvelous poet, lyricist, man named Mitchell Parrish. A little bit of trivia, and yell it out at home or in your bedroom or in your barroom. I'll hear you. If, uh, if you yell good and loud, I'll hear you. Richard? Here we go. Who portrayed Leo Schnauzer in the TV series Car 54? Al up. Lewis. Oh, Grandpa. Right. Grandpa. Whose hit record 1952 was With a Song in My Heart? Jane Froman. Correct. Who wrote the song I've Got My Love to Keep Me Warm? Irving Berlin. Give oh, me a you're hot one. today. Tough Here's one. a real tough one. 1950, who had the giant hit Rag Mop? It was a big group. The Ames Brothers. Ames Brothers, right. Music, music, music was a smash hit Teresa for... Teresa Brewer. Oh, uh, you got it all, Joe. You're in great shape. we say good watching good stardust memories and I say to you have a good everything until we meet again with more not neuralgia but nostalgia stay well good weekend